So what does science have to say about the recent viral scenario of 100 men versus one gorilla? Is it really anywhere near as fair as a fight as people might think? Uh, how do their stats really compare? Well, science has a very clear winner, uh, so let's jump into that. If you like this content, please like and subscribe, but let's get to it. Let's start with the gorilla. So a gorilla on average is anywhere from six feet tall and weighing around 220 kilos. Now this is the silverback males. There's four different species of gorilla. This is only one of those species of gorilla. This is the biggest one. So on average, they're six feet tall, 220 kilos. Now that is not that big compared to a human. The average human could weigh anywhere from 70 to 90 kilos. So we're talking about twice as heavy for a gorilla, but really not that much taller. Now their, their running capabilities really aren't that much different. Gorillas can run up to 20 to 25 miles per hour. This is obviously over very short bursts. Now they are extremely agile. That is surprisingly um, quick for such a bulky creature, but humans really can achieve quite close to that already. Obviously not your average human, but the gorilla really isn't that much faster either. Now the biggest difference we're getting to is the strength of the gorilla. Um, so gorillas have much denser muscle fibers than humans, and there's some estimates that they are anywhere from four to nine times stronger than your average human, but the sources range from anywhere from four to 12 times as strong as a human. So there are mixed sources on this, but in theory gorillas can lift anywhere up to 800 kilos in controlled settings. Now obviously that would allow them to just throw humans aside, crush them unbelievably easily. But there is some really divided opinion on this. Like seriously, what, what scientists are strapping down gorillas, giving them weights and making them lift and seeing and measuring what they can actually do? That is just ludicrous. No, no scientists are doing that. So there isn't any actual data that gives us the true strength of a gorilla compared to a human. Um, now there are some sort of 19th century accounts of real life interactions with gorillas, where in theory they were bending metal guns with their hands and 10 men were unable to pin down a gorilla. But these are sort of 19th century first hand explorer accounts of these situations and we just don't really know if we can ever trust these sources. So there really isn't that much data that is backing up this idea that these gorillas are enormously strong uh, compared to a human, but obviously they are stronger. Estimates tend to be anywhere from four to nine times stronger. Now they also have an incredible bite force compared to a human. Their bite force to about 1,300 PSI of pressure, whereas a human's bite is only 160. So that's like a thousand times stronger their bite is. Um, so their jaws really could crush our bones, bite our faces off, something like that. So the biggest difference in gorillas so far, they're a tiny bit bigger, they're a tiny bit faster, they are twice as heavy, they can bite significantly harder um, and they are anywhere from four to nine times as strong. So they are far stronger than a human. The biggest difference comes to their nature and their intelligence. So when we look at gorillas, they aren't predators. They don't have that killer edge, that killer instinct. They're often actually really quite docile. They're herbivores, they live in packs to help survive and they are actually actively hunted by big cats like jaguars so they don't show that killer instinct that a lion or some sort of deadly predator would show when a, when a gorilla fights they are fighting for females they are fighting for dominance over each other um, so maybe we need some sort of sexy female gorilla prize to tempt the gorilla into battling. I don't know, but they really wouldn't be trying to fight and kill humans. Um, when we have seen them fight, it's over very short durations lasting minutes. They are not designed for long bursts of strength and power. Their bodies really do have limitations. Just like us, they get tired. 
They can't just endlessly continue fighting. Their heart's going to give in, their muscles are going to get tired, they're just all the normal things that would happen to us are also going to happen to them. They've been built up as these battling, insane gods compared to humans and they just really aren't. More often than not, they actually try to intimidate each other more than fighting. We all know that stereotypical banging of the chest of the gorilla. That's, that's what it's trying to do, it's trying to intimidate even before it has to fight. Well, there's footage of giant silverback gorillas running away from geese. They are not these cold-blooded instinctual killers um, that we might perceive them to be. Now the next thing is their intelligence. Obviously, compared to a lot of species, they are far more intelligent. But compared to us, I mean, it's not even its not even a comparison. They have no concept of how to fight. They don't know any techniques involved. They don't know, for example, to aim for the weak spots in humans. They just have no concept of tactics and planning that would be required to fight 100 people at once. If you look at any other fight in history where humans have been outnumbered, or in a battle, how they've been outnumbered. How do they win? It's tactics, it's strategy. Gorillas do not have that level of intelligence and planning, and they just couldn't use the tactics needed to be that outnumbered. So when we take all, this, all of this into account, there are some serious overestimations of the abilities of gorillas. There is technically one recorded time, as far as I could find, of a gorilla killing a human, and it's, it's pretty brutal, it's pretty epic. Now apparently the human was ripped in half, um, but this is a record from 1910 again, so way far back. We don't really know any of the details of that situation. In theory, that could happen. Um, and the issue is we really have no way of testing a lot of these ideas that we've talked about properly with the strength, the power of a gorilla. We have no real evidence to back up this data. But let's give the gorillas a fair stab, let's have a think about humans and see how they compare. So obviously the strength of your average man is just nowhere near that of a gorilla. We've already discussed that, they are up to nine times as strong. But, let's be honest, elite level athletes have been approaching the level of strength of a gorilla. If the upper estimates of a gorilla's strength are anywhere from 800 to 1000 kilos, people are getting relatively close ish to that sort of level of strength um so yes they are far far stronger than your average man but maybe not as much as we think now the average man weighs anywhere from 70 to 90 kilos it varies massively based on geographies but let's take the highest estimates of a gorilla's lifting power of say a thousand kilos which is some of the upper estimates that means just the weight of around 20 odd men could in theory pin down the gorilla. So what are the other 80 doing? The other 80 aren't just sitting there doing nothing. So all it would take in theory is 20 men and they would already be able to just sit on and pin down the gorilla and it just wouldn't be able to fight back. Now the biggest edge that I think humans have is their coordination and their endurance. So let's talk about the coordination first. Now obviously individual humans far far weaker but we have the superiority of group tactics and communication. So let's just say the gorilla is biting the face off of one of the men, which we've discussed it easily could be doing. In that time, it's distracted. It's facing one direction. Biting a face off takes time. So 20 other men could be kicking it repeatedly in the back of the knee, the head, the fingers, the face, all whilst it's doing the biting of faces off and so that coordination there's no way a gorilla can be constantly on the lookout from every direction be fighting a hundred men be fighting 20 men the final tip of the hat that puts it in the advantage of humans is that humans excel in long distance endurance humans are literally built for endurance our anatomy is designed to last a long time our historical hunting strategies were literally just to outlast and outrun and just run down our prey until they died or were too weak to fight. We would literally just run down prey for days until the prey was so exhausted that they couldn't fight back. Um, then we would kill them. And this was 
an extremely effective hunting strategy that humans have used throughout history when we were hunting animals regularly. Now I know it's, it's, it's quite hard to believe really, but we are pretty much the apex predators. I know it doesn't look like it now, as we sit here in our soft, warm homes with our grubby little fingers ordering Deliveroo right to our door, but we literally are the apex predators. We have hunted down huge, dangerous animal species to the point of extinction. An example is the saber-toothed tiger. It is thought that early humans literally hunted them to the point that they were extinct. And then that goes back to the nature of gorillas. They just don't have that in them. They are not a predatory species. They are herbivores. We are, believe it or not, a predatory hunting species. We have that instinct in us and that endurance that long-lasting hunting strategy and capability is what I think would overall just make us win. We would just, a hundred men could easily, easily, without a question of a doubt, outlast a gorilla in terms of endurance and the length of the fight going on. Um, the gorilla is easily gonna start taking out men. Like, let's be honest here, we are gonna have to accept some sacrifice in this way. And actually that could be, again, be an edge for the gorilla. Do are there going to be men within your 100 that are willing to sacrifice themselves to be that first man to run in and start trying to fight the gorilla? To be fair, there probably would be, but that is questionable. So it's going to take some sacrifice, um, and that's the one way I could see the gorilla getting around this. If the men weren't willing to do that, um, then it depends. But again, they don't need to. All they need to do is outlast the gorilla. So the gorilla is definitely going to take out some people here. Maybe 10 to 20 odd. But overall, I think science has put this to bed. 100 men easily beat a gorilla. Let me know in the comments if you agree. And how many men you think it would take for the gorilla to actually win.